live. All right, we are live. All right, we'll we'll uh, we'll. we'll well, Jordan Dahl, thanks very much for joining us for the second PEO virtual town hall. Uh, Pat Mason here, and I am joined by Colonel McMotable Rob Berry, our deputy PEO. Uh, so as I said last time, we are going to uh, it not just be me talking as we were here. So Rob, thanks. I, I appreciate it, and I appreciate yeah, yeah. the team uh, for setting this up today so that we could uh, really engage with you and get your feedback, comments, uh, answer some of the questions that you've already provided to us. Uh, but also, you know, it is Facebook Live, so if you have comments that you want to put in, please put those in. We've got the screens up here so that I'll be able to actually uh, read those, and then Rob and I uh, can dig in any other questions up and, and answer them as appropriate. And as always, if there's comments that or questions really that you have and you don't want to ask those over Facebook, please send us a note, get in touch with us, and we would be happy to answer because we want to ensure that we are communicating across the workforce and letting you know where we stand. And so before we get into the, the questions that you have today and what we really want to talk about, I just again wanted to thank each and every one of you for what you do for our Army, for each other as we continue to execute our priorities. You know, it was seven weeks ago that this started. Uh, it has been a, a, a trying seven weeks, but it has been absolutely phenomenal uh, to watch what you have been able to accomplish, your adaptability, your persistence, your resilience, as we execute our mission. And Colonel Barry will talk a little bit more about that as, a, as I transition over to him. But I, again, just want to tell you how incredibly proud I am to be associated with, sort, with, with this organization. Uh, every single day uh, when I see what you are doing and how you adapt to the situation at hand, uh, I am fr it further reinforces the incredible talent we have and how, from my perspective, if we are doing our jobs as leaders in this organization, we are resourcing you appropriately so that you can get after the mission at hand and deliver results for our soldiers. So again, thanks very much for what you're doing. I look forward to discussing today with you some of your questions and comments. Please keep those comments coming in on Facebook. Uh, Colonel Barry, um, over to you. Thank you, Ken, and Mr. Mason. Uh, pleasure to be with you all today. Uh, this is my first foray. I'll go on the record into Facebook. Uh, so, uh, look forward to this opportunity today to uh, share our latest status uh, with you and to uh, hopefully uh, quell any concerns or uh, anxiety that's out there uh, in the workforce. Uh, so, I appreciate the opportunity to be here and uh, I'll echo what Mr. Mason just uh, said on our thanks to the workforce for your continued efforts. Uh, we look forward to uh, answering any questions that you have today. As they stream in through Facebook Live, I feel very young even saying that. So uh, again, appreciate everything you're doing. So I want to start by reiterating our priorities here in PEO Aviation. They've really remained unchanged uh, since mid-March, right, when we first started dealing with uh, the pandemic. Uh, those priorities are protect the workforce, right, number one, uh, and that will remain that way. So how are we doing that, right? We, it starts by how we had initiated uh, really immediate uh, maximum telework for the workforce uh, and that will continue right at least through the 15th of May um, and as we'll talk about more as we proceed here in the town hall about how we're going to uh, return to normal or a new normal um, but as we do that we're going to do it with always having protect the workforce as our number one priority so we're going to proceed in a methodical uh, and deliberate manner as we return to our new normal. And we're going to do that within the framework uh, that's established here on the arsenal by uh, AMC and our senior mission commander. Uh, and we'll do it in a, a uh, logical, measured uh, manner. So that's how we're protecting the workforce second priority to fight the virus. So that's what we've been doing. Uh, we've been fighting the virus from our homes and by maintaining strict adherence to our federal and state guidance uh, to stay at home uh, and to maintain disciplined uh, social distancing. So we'll continue to do that, uh, again, at least through the 15th of May, and then we'll proceed uh, based on facts that we have at that time uh, in a measured approach going forward. Uh, so that's our second priority. Third priority is continue to execute the mission, right? As an Army organization, that's what we do. Uh, and uh, I know Mr. Mason and I share an immense amount of pride in uh, our ability of our workforce to do just that. Uh, we consistently message to our customers and our stakeholders around the Army 
and around the world that we are open for business. Uh, although we are, happen to be executing a lot of our tasks via telework, we remain prepared to execute the Army's mission. Uh, and we've done just that. So in our first town hall, uh, Mr. Mason had shared some of those accomplishments, but just for the workforce to share the things that uh, the team has been doing, uh, port operations from utility helicopters uh, and cargo up in Delaware, uh, a team of just under 40 folks uh, safely traveling to Delaware, uh, both tearing down aircraft, preparing them to load on a ship, execution of the debarkation, and send that ship uh, off downrange delivering capability uh, that is necessary uh, around the world. So my thanks to that team for that. Uh, Light Utility Helicopter has recently received an airworthiness release uh, for a COVID-19 protection screen so that those crews and the guard can continue to execute their mission in support of uh, first responders uh, around the world. So my thanks to them uh, as, as well. Uh, fixed wing and MASFO, so Multinational Aviation Systems Project Office. John, that's for you, the full name. Uh, both fixed wing and MASFO every day continue to execute missions in theater and around the world in support of our national missions. Uh, it often goes under the radar, and certainly I didn't have a full appreciation for what they do. But when you see the amount of coordination that's required, uh, because folks around the world are unplugged from their normal operations. It's a tremendous uh, thing to observe and appreciate everything they're doing, them and their teams, uh, every day. And then AMSA, Aviation Mission Systems Architecture, uh, Colonel Frazier and that team, have continued execution of their numerous uh, missions, but primarily I'll focus in on delivery of capability to units that are deploying, are preparing to deploy, conducting new equipment training for them, and continuing uh, as if there has been absolutely uh, no impact at all due to COVID-19. So my thanks to them. And, you know, when you look at the totality of work that, goes, that is being executed across the PEO, I, I just want to reinforce uh, what Colonel Barry said. It really is phenomenal to see the mission execution as we continue to protect each and every one of you, the force, we fight this virus and we execute on behalf of our Army. And so again, thanks very much for what each and every one of you do. And I specifically want to highlight three individuals who were recognized with 2019 ASALT Acquisition Awards. Uh, unfortunately, the award ceremony was canceled this year, uh, but uh, it, it really is great recognition. And the three really represent all of you and the work that goes on because you know, their ability to do their jobs and their ability to succeed and be recognized for what they've accomplished uh, it, it really is because of all of the great teammates they have to their left and to their right that are working with them every single day. And so the first is uh, Scott Harris, Flora, and formerly of the uh, ITEP office. Scott's the uh, log chief. And Scott was recognized as the Acquisition Logistician of the Year. A really tremendous honor for Scott, uh, tremendous honor for the ITEP team. And it shows how the ITEP team and Scott's team specifically was able to navigate through the milestone B and move the program from its prototyping phase into engineering manufacturing development. And ITEP is a critical program as we move forward. I know many of you know that that engine is going to go in the Blackhawk, it's going to go in the Apache, and it is going to go in the FARA, the, the part of the future vertical lift ecosystem. And so, Scott, my congratulations to you. My congratulations to the entire ITEP team, the log team that you worked with because I know they were instrumental in you being recognized as the Acquisition Logistician of the Year. Yeah. I also want to congratulate Lieutenant Colonel Dan Tedford, our UH-60 Product Manager. Uh, Dan was a winner in the Major General Harold Green Award for Acquisition Writing in the category of Future Operations. Uh, Dan wrote an incredible thought-provoking piece on the implementation of artificial intelligence on the battlefield. Uh, and, and I would encourage any of you to go out and read that because it really does talk about where we're going with the implementation of artificial intelligence and some of the challenges associated with that. Not just from an acquisition perspective, but how we would actually utilize AI in that type of construct. So please uh, go, uh, go read Dan's article. Uh, and then lastly to Michelle Miller, who's actually right across from me because she's helping with this. There we go, Michelle. She is helping with this Facebook live stream. So Michelle, turn the camera around. 
there we go. We, we, we could. We could. She would be embarrassed, though, I think, <laughs> right? Um, for her uh, best photo category, she was recognized with what's called a, uh, the Altis Awards, and that was for her uh, photo of Bird in the Hand. So, Michelle, congratulations to you. Congratulations, Dan. Congratulations, Scott. Uh, really just, just great representatives of this entire PEO team and, uh, and the, the talent that is out there executing every single day. So with that, as, uh, as some introductory comments and some recognition of the team for what they've been out there doing every day, uh, we're going to turn to your questions. And again, I would, again, ask you to put your comments on Facebook, any questions that you have, and we are more than willing to answer those in this forum. So the first one really is related to what Colonel Barry just talked about, which is what is the return to workforce plan? What is the return to work plan? And how does that tie with the state? Um, what do we expect when we bring people back into the office? And uh, how would we conduct meetings when we get into this, uh, this new environment? Uh, and I would first say that I, I don't really perceive that we're going to be having a return to normal. It, it's really a return to somewhat of a new normal. And so we know that yesterday the stay-at-home order expired for the state of Alabama. Uh, we are now in the Safer at Home program. Uh, that runs through the 15th. The uh, AMC commander, General Parna, in my email to you last week, I had mentioned that he had uh, stated that uh, maximum telework would be implemented until May 15th. And so with those two in place and with continued Army guidance and OSD guidance and, and really what Colonel Barry said, we are working through our implementation plan and we will continue to roll that out over the next two weeks. Uh, it will be a phased plan. Uh, it will be a prudent plan that is based on the conditions at the time and we will continue to bring people back in. But again, always watching to make sure that we are protecting the force and go back to those, those mission execution items we talked about, right? Protecting the force, fighting the virus and executing our mission. So we're gonna start doing that on the 15th it will be nested within OSD, Army, and garrison guidance and aligned to the state as well uh, to ensure that we absolutely protect everyone as we come in. Um, I would expect to start with key and mission essential personnel, but when we do come in, we are going to look for that six feet of separation, the inclusion of masks within the, the workplace because that is part of Army policy and it's just good practices we have for our continued social distancing. And when we have meetings, we are looking at keeping those at 10 or less, which is in accordance with the current policy that we have right now. Uh, and certainly within the separation that you have within those meetings as we move forward. And so really what that means, and it feeds into the next question that we had, which is about continued telework and what do I do with continued telework? So as we go into this new normal, I do expect that we will have elements of telework. It won't be just a return and everyone comes back in. And then within telework, we're looking very closely with the return to work plan of how we balance all of the family requirements. Schools are closed right now. Daycares are closed right now. Many of you may be taking care of someone who is in a high risk category. You may be in a high risk category. And those are all elements that we are looking at on how we effectively execute our telework as we move forward. And then how we balance that return to work plan. And so I would encourage, encourage all of you to communicate through your supervisors your unique family needs, your unique needs, so that we can create the right balance as we get back into the telework environment. Uh, I will also encourage you to learn about all of the telework products that we have out there right now. So our CIO G6 team has done a great job in implementing those. Uh, we recently conducted some training on how to effectively use WebEx. We've got two instantiations of WebEx right now. We have a FedEx or a FedEx, a, a FedRAMP version. So that was that was not a uh, an advertisement for anybody. We have a FedRAMP certified version, and then we have one that's on the PEO network. They both have different capabilities that will allow really the same functionality, but a little bit of a different uh, capability that allows us to be off the network and then bring in others from outside the PEO network when we need to collaborate. And certainly great tools that we can use to collaborate on briefing products, chat rooms that are in there that you can go to. Uh, we also have the MS Teams uh, instantiation that was pushed down. We've used that extensively as well. And so we are rolling out training for all of those. We conducted some supervisor training over the last couple of weeks where we talked about these products and we're going to continue to roll those out to the totality of the workforce because we are going to have this new normal for quite a while. We do expect telework to be part of this and it will just be a balance between the telework and who comes into the office and obviously we are balancing that with your specific needs, the needs of, of childcare, the needs of, of your families 
and the needs for those that are in the high risk categories. So we'll continue to expand on those over the next two weeks as we return to work and as we continue to implement our telework policy. I would encourage you to communicate with your supervisors again to make sure that they absolutely understand your needs. And I would also encourage you to understand the use of all of our telework tools that we have out there now. We've deployed a number of them and they really are strong tools that allow us to work in a distributed environment. Um, and so with that, I'll, I'll turn it back over to Colonel Barry, who's going to address a couple of other questions that came in. So we received a lot of questions about uh, as we do return to the new normal, what is that going to look like uh, inside our workspaces? So um, we are still working on a plan, and that plan, as I mentioned before, and Mr. Mason had reiterated, uh, will be uh, nested within the garrison framework that they've established, and that framework has guidance right that comes from federal state and inside the dod and army uh, will adhere to that it also acknowledges that we need to have a very clear understanding of services here on the arsenal and mr mason had mentioned child care but certainly testing and access to testing is another thing that will be part of our plan as we go forward um, the last one is just individual plans down inside our formation so how each of the pms and headquarters implements the, the guidance will be addressed. And then the last thing that goes all the way back to the original uh, initiation of our telework is communicate, 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 right? Over communicate to your workforce. We've heard that from Mr. Mason. Uh, we are attempting uh, to maintain that as we go forward. So that will be a part of any uh, bring us back to work. Now the specifics uh, in our draft plan uh, we are looking at temperature checking our personnel as they enter uh, back into the workforce and we'll maintain social distancing uh, to the greatest extent inside uh, our various facilities uh, as well as having masks uh, on our faces while we're executing the mission as we return. All of that will remain flexible, right? It will be deliberate and measured, uh, but the key, the key message is it will have as its number one priority protection of the workforce. So the good news is we've been able to execute our mission uh, in this telework environment. So what we're not going to do is rapidly snap back into what used to be normal. Uh, and as Mr. Mason said, as we define what new normal looks like, it will be measured. It will have protection of the workforce as the number one priority and will continue to accept uh, assess it over time to make sure that it's logical and that it makes sense. So that's we're asked specifically about uh, measures that we're going to put in place as we bring the workforce back in and that will be a phased approach. Uh, to cleaning of our facilities, uh, the all of our facilities in PU Aviation and hats off to both Garrison and our G4 and Chief of Staff uh, for the work they've done in that regard. They have received a deep cleaning it is to a deeper standard uh, than what we would have normally received in, in our facilities. Uh, we have uh, contingency uh, plans where for a retrograde of any bringing folks back to work, if we do find issues uh, and do have infections, we'll have plans in place for how we would reverse uh, bringing folks back into the office. All things we're thinking about in a deliberate manner and we'll proceed down that path. Uh, in the same way that we have implemented the path that brought us home, we're going to do that same thing uh, as we come back to work. Uh, so I think I'll hit on those. We've got some questions, it looks like, uh, from the live stream crew. Um, will the return plan include travel guidance uh, and specifically to the, the local 100 mile radius? Uh, I can tag that one if you'd like. Absolutely, go ahead. So, um, so the question again, as we return, will we relook what we've currently put out as local travel? So uh, for those unaware, if anyone in the formation travels outside 100 miles today, when they come back, they're required to self-quarantine for 14 days. Um, so we, yes, is the answer to the question. We will re-examine that, and over time, we'll continue to be consistent with what Garrison's doing and guidance from the Army. We are perhaps conservative on that today, but I think that's okay. We'll re-examine that and we'll constantly uh, determine whether that makes sense as we go forward. And I think the, uh, there was another question that came in on 
key and essential mission personnel and returning back to work and I had specifically addressed that and so as we look over the next two weeks and we move to this March 15th and the, really the safer at home order and what AMC and the garrison has put out we will start to bring in key and mission essential personnel and really the purpose behind that is to first get into the workspaces and then make sure that the implementation plans can be implemented so how would we implement social distancing? We've talked about those plans, we've looked at them, we've had people walk through the different workspaces, all the workspaces have been cleaned, but we also wanna get the key and mission essential personnel in to actually be in the workspaces and then make sure that the plans that we've implemented are executable. And so that's where we would start. And then as we discussed earlier, it's really conditions based from there. So I would expect that there would be some adjustments made in the plan as we get more folks to come in and look. They're gonna get their input as leaders within this organization. And then we'll go back and look at the implementation plan that we have. And then part of that as well is when you look at conference rooms, you look at meetings and you wanna to try to maintain that social distancing, you wanna maintain six feet of separation, you don't wanna have meetings greater than 10 people, and how do we effectively do that and how do we break it down to who comes in and who would be on telework as we rotate through and, and a number of organizations and we're coordinating with a number of organizations to look at how we are all going to do this because there's a lot of good ideas out there and if you have good ideas we absolutely want to hear this uh, the same thing goes because there was a question about whether masks would need to be worn and there's a policy and if you're within that six feet you will wear masks that's the policy that we have if that policy changes we will certainly look and update our policy, but we'll be in alignment with the, with the Army and the garrison policy as it moves forward. And so that's all part of looking at how we roll back into the workspaces, the key and essential mission personnel coming in and really providing their input on the implementation plan, and then how we would continue to bring back in more of the workforce. And again, I'm gonna go back to the comment that I made on telework and really your unique circumstances because that's a critical component to this. Um, are you high risk or not? Are you taking care of somebody who's high risk? Um, where are we within the state? Where are we within the local community? And if we see spikes, do we need to readjust the plan? And that's why the plan is reversible so that we can start to go back into more of a social distance telework status if conditions deem that we go do that. Um, I think you've, you've discussed on the masks provided, so if you wanted to talk about that. Sure. So um, I, I think that's well said by you. In, in general, uh, we are attempting to stay right within guidance that we've received from higher end policy. Um, but yes, masks initially, if we were to re return to work with KE, so Key Essential and Mission Essential, uh, as soon as 15 May, the mask right now are not available for distribution. So it would be required that you bring in a cloth mask, right? So not a medical grade mask, but whatever you likely already have as you go to the grocery store or somewhere else. We're looking at other things in the, re the reason, so that the important reason for that mask is as much as we'd like to say that you're going to stay six feet away from someone, the reality is with a number of folks in an office environment, uh, you're likely still going to come within six feet. So we want to, at a minimum, make sure you have a mask available if you needed it, again, for your safety. So that's the logic behind why we want to have folks have masks in hand as they return. Uh, the idea is, from a pre preventative standpoint, the ability to check temperatures as folks come in is consistent with other uh, policies that folks have as people begin to return to the workplace, all subject to change all subject to feedback from the workforce uh, and again we'll, we'll stay with number one priority being protection of the workforce yeah, and I, I, I think one of the things that Colonel Barry said I really want to reinforce which is feedback from the workforce and that's part of when folks initially come back into workspaces and looking at those workspaces we also need feedback from you because things that we initially look at implementing may sound really really good in plan, but when you get down to executing those, you have a much better understanding of that because of your workspaces, your offices, the unique drivers within your particular office and your particular section. And so that's why that feedback loop is absolutely critical as we move through this. 
and it's really over the next two weeks. Everything that we've told you is where we are in planning, but we are looking for feedback from all of the people within the organization so that we understand the unique aspects of it, and that's part of bringing folks back in. And there was also another comment that was made about how our rules going to be enforced as we go through this. So uh, again, you know, that's something that we look at. There is personal accountability also that's associated with this as you look at it, and it's the personal accountability that we take uh, in everything that we do within our lives. And so I would say that uh, as we look at how will rules and plans be enforced, I would say that there is a personal accountability aspect along with an enforcement piece of that. But again, that's part of what we put into the implementation plan uh, as we continue to refine our guidance and we stay nested within what the Army is doing uh, really at the larger scale and then down here at the garrison and the state level. Um, I also wanted to address because there was a question about if there's a stay-at-home order that was impacting someone who doesn't live in Alabama but commutes down every day. And I did want to remind everybody that uh, given the work that we do, it is considered essential. And so if needed, folks can travel even though there is a stay-at-home order. And I know we had put that out in emails, but I did want to remind that, that as things would vary and you go from stay at home to safer at home, or if another state has a specific order, uh, if it is essential that you travel in, uh, then you are authorized to travel in and be in our workspaces to conduct, again, essential business on behalf of the United States Army. Um, what is the feedback loop for this? So certainly up through the chain of command, there is a PAO inbox, and then the other thing that I had put out in email and we're going to put out again is that we are setting up on SharePoint, really a Dropbox on SharePoint where you can put all your comments in as well. Uh, but we will post the implementation plan that we have as draft that has gone out to all of the leaders right now and they have it, and we'll continue to disseminate all that information so that folks can get a look at it, they can read it, and then they can provide us uh, their feedback. And, and, and again, I want to reinforce, your feedback's critical to this because you understand the unique aspects of where you are, where you work, and the unique relationships necessary to really execute your work within your section. Um, so, Colonel Barry, I will, uh, I will turn it back over to you for any additional Fantastic. comments or questions. It looks like we had a late break when we got a little bit of time here. Are there are essential personnel with school-age children, what do they do? Right, so I think Mr. Mason had touched that a little bit the flexibility in, in our draft plan uh, in the second paragraph is that uh, subordinate organizations, in our case the, the project management offices, have maximum flexibility uh, to execute their mission, both who uh, continues to telework uh, while we are uh, going through COVID-19 and the impacts of the pandemic, and in what manner they do so. so um, Nothing we are going to do is going to be dictatorial, specifically to pulling people uh, back into the office. And it's all going to be through a lens of that individual's uh, needs and in conjunction with their chain of command for how they execute it. So that's a good question. I appreciate that. Um, so I think we are actually, we're going to have some more questions coming in, and perhaps we can look to answer those through the other means, but it's probably about time that we uh, tied up. Unfortunately, my first foray into Facebook has been uh, thrilling, and I appreciate you all uh, participating in it, uh, in it with us. Um, it is an honor uh, to work with you all. Uh, Mr. Mason and I are, are humbled on a daily basis uh, by everything that the workforce uh, has done and will do on behalf of our soldiers, so it is an honor to serve with you. Uh, and I've always wanted to do this before, so I'll do it now. Over to you. There we go. Over to me. All right. Well, thanks. So, um, again, our second foray into uh, Facebook Live, and as you probably noted, Colonel Barry and I do not have much experience with Facebook. <laughs> um, so this is all new to us as we continue to, uh, to move forward. Um, but we, like you, are adapting and overcoming the challenges that we face, like figuring out Facebook. Um, so, you know, as we conclude, and, and again, some, some additional questions are coming in, and we will get those answers out to you. Uh, we're also going to send out the link on where you can send in your comments, because we are going to have that posted up on SharePoint as well, uh, where you can drop off comments, and then we'll get those answers out to you as well. Um, you know, as I close, I, I really want to reflect on what I said about three weeks ago, 
when we started, and this is live because you just heard the, the phone ring as well in here because somebody didn't silence it, and, and that's quite all right, right? Um, quite, quite good with that. Um, but, you know, in closing, um, I said last time, you know, the, the expression these days is stay healthy. And it still remains that, right? Our focus is to ensure the workforce stays healthy. And that's the number one within the mission priorities that Colonel Barry went over. Um, and then last time, I also talked about the physical, mental, and spiritual aspects of your resiliency and of all of us as we've gone through this and will continue to go through this. You know, Colonel Barry and I were talking a little bit this morning when we, uh, when we came into work just about a little bit of the mental fatigue and how you balance when you're on telework on when you're actually working and when you're not working because there's no clean break, right? You're not getting in your car and driving home where you have that mental break. You're at your computer, you walk out and then somebody sends you a message or something else and you walk back in even though it's later on in the day or it's in the evening. And so it does have a mental toll on everyone. And then obviously sitting at that desk all day or sitting in an area all day and not getting around and socializing with everybody, it has another toll on you because we do take breaks during work. We get out and socialize with each other. We talk with each other. We share what's going on with our families. And so that's why it's absolutely critical that we really focus going forward, especially after seven weeks. We look at another couple of weeks and how this is going to continue to move forward on maintaining that physical, mental, and spiritual resiliency as we move through this. It's going to be a beautiful weekend. It is beautiful out there today. I know some of you are going to be on the river, on the lake. You're going to be out fishing or working in the yard. Enjoy it. It's going to be absolutely beautiful and get some physical exercise while you're doing that and take those breaks. Uh, the mental side of it and how to release some of the stress and anxiety that goes on. You know, the last time we talked, I talked about the family Zoom call and yes, it is personal. So we use Zoom even though it isn't authorized by the, the USG to use. So we're still continuing those. We actually have a Cahoots game that we play. Um, and we were doing this uh, last Sunday with the family and they had a question about me and I was really thrilled because my nephew uh, way up in New York said, uh, well, I'm sure whatever the answer is, it's boring because it involves Uncle Pat. So, um, and it was good because it was a great stress and anxiety relief, right? Uncle Pat's boring and uh, yeah, probably in his view, Uncle Pat is probably boring, right? But again, that mental side of it and taking those breaks and getting that, fam that opportunity to be with family and to share with family. And then spiritual, right? Our beliefs, our practices, what gives us value. Um, what you do has meaning and purpose. What you do matters to our country, to the Army, and to the soldiers that are out, continue deployed, getting ready to deploy, and training with new equipment. And so thank you for what you continue to do. Thank you for your resiliency, your adaptability, your persistence in working through all of this. Uh, we will continue to move forward. We will continue to address and fight the virus. We will protect the workforce and we will deliver on our commitments to the Army because that's who we are. That's PEO Aviation. Uh, that is how we overcome all the obstacles that are in our way. That's how we're going to overcome COVID-19. There is no doubt we will come out on the other side. Uh, we will prevail and we will continue to deliver for our Army. And I just want to say on behalf of Colonel Barry and myself both, uh, thanks again. Um, it, is, it is incredibly humbling to be part of this organization and know what you do every day. Uh, I really look forward to the opportunities when I just get to be on a WebEx these days, but when I can get back with you all and see you face to face, because you really do give energy to every single one of us. We appreciate what you do. Uh, keep after it and, uh, and we will be talking to you and we will be answering your questions and we really want your feedback. So send that feedback in, keep it coming. And again, thanks, Michelle, for putting this all together today, and thanks for the team. And uh, we'll be talking to you next time. Thanks.